Hi, it's Emma Liu, and in this video, we'll be talking about how natural selection is related to a population's environment. Let's start by looking at nature. So in nature, we often find that animals appear to be perfectly adapted to their environment. Here are some examples of these adaptations. This is a hummingbird. If you look at this bird, we can see that it has a long beak. This beak fits perfectly into the tubular-shaped flower. Without this long beak, the hummingbird wouldn't be able to reach the nectar deep down in the flower. Thus, it won't be able to eat and survive. Here we have an owl, which is blending in perfectly with its environment or its surroundings. Lastly, we have an arctic fox. The arctic fox exhibits thick fur which allows it to be protected against the cold climate it lives in. And the white fur allows it to be camouflaged and blended in with the snow in the background. These are some good examples of adaptation that animals have with their environment. However, the question really remains is how this came to be. How are the animals so perfectly adapted to their environment? This is answered by a theory called natural selection. Natural selection is a theory proposed by English naturalist Charles Darwin in the 19th century. In a nutshell, natural selection is a process in which the fittest phenotype of a species will survive and reproduce to pass on the fit traits. And over time, this leads to change in traits of the living thing or adaptations. Here's an example that can help you understand this concept better. We begin by seeing an original population of a species. Within this species, we can see different individuals. This is called a variation. In this case, the high resistance level individuals have a beneficial trait versus the low resistance level because the high resistance level ones survive and low resistance dies. As the high resistance phenotype survives and reproduces, the natural selection is apparent and we are left with a population of high resistance species. But what is making this selection? Well, the environment. The environment is a depending factor on how the selection is made. When Darwin was coming up with his theories, he encountered two species that helped him along. What we can see is that the finch had to survive in different environments because they lived on different islands. They were selected differently according to their environment and resulted in different traits, hence the different beaks. But they all started off with one ancestor with slightly different variations. Similarly, the tortoise developed different shell types depending on the different food source that they had. Now, to really emphasize on how environment can affect the natural selection process, we can look at the pepper moth. There are two variations of the pepper moth, one of which is lighter in color and the other is dark. They live in light colored trees. As we can see, light moth are camouflage. This trait is selected for. The dark ones are highly visible, thus the trait is selected against. Exactly why the selection process is for or against for the pepper moth is that if the predators, the, the birds, cannot see the pepper moth, then they will be less likely to eat it, which leads to higher survivability. And this led to the population of the pepper moth to be more commonly light in color. However, in 1895, Industrial Revolution changed the entire selection process for the pepper moth. The trees started turning darker as a result of pollution. The dark colored moth are now not visible and the light colored is. What was once selected for is now selected against. We can see that the determining factor for natural selection is really dependent on the environment the population is in. I've been talking a lot about environment, but what is environment really referred to? Environment is really the surrounding or the conditions in which an organism lives in. It includes abiotic factors, which are non-living components, such as temperature, climate, light, and more. It also includes the biotic factors, which are the living components, such as disease, animals, and all living things really in the area. We refer to abiotic and biotic factors that cause natural selection to make selections as selective pressure. Selective pressure is any phenomena which alters the behavior and fitness of living organisms within a given environment. It's essentially the biotic and abiotic factors in the environment that affects how well an organism is able to survive. It's related to natural selection in the form that selective pressure drives natural selection which drives evolution. To end this off, I'd like to summarize some key ideas. First of all, natural selection is basically the idea that phenotypes with better traits suited for its environment will survive and reproduce, passing on their traits. Thus, environment really defines the selection. So a change in environment can cause a change in how a trait is selected for or against. We can see this in the pepper moth example, where what was once selected for may now be selected against. Lastly, I want to emphasize on this point here. The environment of the population, or the selective pressure that exists in the environment of the population, drives the natural selection, which drives evolution. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you for listening.